Hi, Kishan Panchal here and today we are going to go through GreenPlum high availability feature and perform recovery rebalance on our cluster. GreenPlum database support highly available fault oriented database services when you configure GreenPlum high availability feature. With the GreenPlum database, share nothing, MPP architecture, the master host and segment host each have their own dedicated memory and disk storage and each master or segment instance has its own independent data directory. A RAID is a combination of at least two different storage media to form a single large logical drive. There are many types of RAID levels which are available. Here I have demonstrated the RAID 10. In simple term, RAID 10 is a combination of RAID 1 and 0. In RAID 10 configuration that combines disk mirroring and disk stripping to protect the data as well as give us a good bandwidth. If any error occur in the disk, we always have redundancy available. As at server level, hard drives are hot swappable. We don't require any downtime and our GreenPlum cluster is up and running. GreenPlum database master instance is client's single point of access to the system. The master instance store the global system catalog, the set of system tables that store metadata about the database instance, but no user data. If an unmirrored master instance fails or become inaccessible, the GreenPlum instance is effectively offline since the entry point of the system has been lost. For this reason, a standby master host must be ready to take over if primary master fails. In the upcoming video, we will go through adding the standby host as well as maintaining the synchronization with the master and the standby. Next, we have segment mirroring. GreenPlum database segment instance each store and manage a portion of database data with coordination from the master instance. If any unmirrored segment fails, the database may have to be shut down or recover and transaction occurred after the most recent backup could be lost. Therefore, mirror segments are essential elements of a high availability solution. In GreenPlum, we have two options for mirroring. First is the group mirror, which is the default and second we have spread mirror. Group mirroring is the easiest to set up and it's the default green plum mirror configuration. It is least expensive to expand since it can be done by adding as few as few as two hosts. There is no need to move mirror after expansion to maintain a consistent mirror configuration. In the following figure we can see in segment host 1 we have two primaries and their set of mirrors are there on a segment host 2 with smell mirroring mirror for each host primary segments are spread across as many as host there are segment per host. Spread mirroring is easy to set up when the cluster is initialized, but required that the cluster have at least one or more hosts, then there are segment per host. In the following figure, we can see now the set is broken. Where segment 1 primary host mirror is there on a segment host 2, and the mirror for primary segment 2 is there on segment host 3. For some use cases, an additional level of redundancy can be provided by maintaining two GreenPlum database clusters that store the same data. The decision to implement dual cluster should be made with business requirement in mind. This can be achieved with dual ETL. The ETL process are performed twice in parallel on each cluster and validated each time. With dual ETL provide for a complete standby cluster with the same data. It also provides the capability to query the data on both clusters, doubling the processing throughput. The application can take advantage of both clusters as needed and also ensure that ETL is successful and validated on both the sites. At last, we are covering GP backup and restore utility. That makes backup in parallel across the segment so that backup scales as the cluster grows in hardware size. There could be many ways to take backup. It could be on a local disk or to a NAS or SAN. Here in GreenPlum, we can see redundancy is there at every level. For in-detail information, please check out our VMware docs. There could be many ways to optimize GreenPlum database as per the business requirement and use the full potential of GreenPlum database as well as the hardware. Now we'll perform recovery balance to bring up our failed segments, administrator perform the recovery while GreenPlum database is up and running by running the GP recover sec utility. This utility locates the failed segment, verify they are valid and compare the transaction state with the currently active segment to determine changes made while the segments was offline. GP recover sec synchronizes 
the changed database files with the active segment and bring the segment back online. To create this scenario, I have restarted my one of the VM. In your situation, it could be because of an unscheduled reboot or load on the cluster or failure in the process or might a hardware failure on the host. As soon as the primary is down, the mirror on the another host will take up his role. We can monitor via gpsate e or view in the command center. Database is still available, but as the cluster is unbalanced, this will create load on the another host where mirror is there and the performance will be affected as per the configuration. At first, we'll try to find the root cause of the issue and go through the steps to troubleshoot. First, let's check the GP segment configuration and check the current status of all our segments. We can find many details here, like the current role and the preferred role, what's the status, whether it's up or down. We can see here that segment 4, mirror and the primary both are down. To filter this, I'll just add the wire condition. Now it's clearly mentioned that the segment 4 is down. To identify the exact timings, when our segment goes down, we can query the GP configuration history and get the timings of the time where the roles were changed. Next, fill CD to the master data directory and PG logs and see our .csv log file which is generated by Greenplum database. As the log size is higher, we will use the filters to grab the exact errors. In our case, we already have timings which we noted from querying the GP configuration history and we'll use that to filter the log. Once we find the exact issue, we can use the other tools to identify if our host is running or not, is reachable or not. In my case, my host is up and running and my data is there and all the directories are not impacted. Once we are sure that our GP segment 4 is up and running and no issue is reported, we'll perform incremental recovery. Make sure there is less load as you are going to need an additional bandwidth to sync the down segment. Monitor the progress via GP state hyphen E. After a segment recovery, segment instance may not be returned to the preferred role that they were given at the system in initialization time. This can leave the system in potential unbalanced state. As some segment hosts may have more active segments than in, than is optimal for top system performance. It is required to rebalance primary and mirror segment, returning them to their preferred roles. For that, we will execute gp recoverseg r 
to perform rebalance. Note this operation will cancel queries that are currently executing. So take necessary approval before performing rebalance. Monitor the progress via GP state hyper -E. Now our cluster is running in optimal mode and we have performed incremental recovery. In our first case, all our directories and data was intact. Only resync was required. Hence we perform incremental recovery. But take any situation where your mount point is corrupted or you are not able to recover the file system. To create this scenario, I am deleting directory of the primary segment which consists of Greenplum file as well as the data. As soon as the green plum process find out, it will mark the primary as down. Then mirror will take up its place. Now the incremental recovery will not work here because all the data of the primary is lost or been corrupted. In this scenario, we need to perform full recovery. To execute full recovery, we will use GP RecoverSec utility with hyphen F. This is one of the example which I have created and tested. In your situation, it could be an another case. So make sure before performing GP recover sec. Execute GP recover sec hyphen F and wait until the process is complete. You can monitor the progress via GP state hyphen E. Once the full recovery is completed, we can verify that our directory is there again, which consists of green plum files as well as the data. The GP recover sec utility will perform a full copy of active segment instance in order to recover the failed segment. In background, a full recovery deletes the data directory of the down segment instance before copying the data from the active segment instance. Before performing full recovery, ensure that segment failure did not cause data corruption. Also note that full recovery, the utility does not restore custom files that were stored in the segment instance data directory. Once the full recovery is completed, we need to perform rebalance. And here, our rebalance is also completed and our cluster is running in an optimal flow. So that's all for today. Thank you guys. For more detailed information, please check our VMware docs and let us know in the command down below if you are having any query. We'll catch up in the next video where we are going to add standby host as well as maintain the synchronization between the master and standby host.